Mike Ferrante is on the air. Live from the Andrew Villanova University, located at 601 County Line Road in Redmond. Tonight's show is presented by Miller Lite, the original light beer brewed for more taste than only 96 calories. Miller Lite, cold brew. And the Andrew Villanova University, preferred hotel of Villanova Athletics. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Talking Villanova Football with head coach Mark Ferrante. I'm Steve Pannone. We're coming to you live from the inn at Villanova University, located at 601 County Line Road in Radnor. And, Coach, i got to know what's in the secret sauce, 3-0 and and, op and getting openers under your, in your career. Big 34-14 yeah, win over Colgate. No secret sauce. We're healthy when we go into the first <laughs> game coming out of preseason. So that helps when you have all your players uh, available to you. So it was a great win. It seemed like that game was uh, – a long time ago now with the bye week in between our next game this weekend against Lehigh. But um, guys came off the bus and came out of the locker room with a lot of enthusiasm and played real physical against Colgate, and we're happy to come out with the uh, victory for sure. As, as a longtime Villanova fan, there's a lot of new names out there. You know, it seemed like you had a lot of turnover. You're only starting three seniors. So obviously a younger group than you probably really would like to have or normally have. Let's start at the quarterback. Dan Smith comes in, and, and what did you think of his performance? Yeah, Dan did a good job. He uh, managed the game well. He went to the receivers that were open. We spread the ball around quite a bit. And you could tell it wasn't his, it, even though it was his first start for us, obviously it wasn't the first time he's been on a starting uh, role here. So he had a lot of experience coming in with his two years starting at Campbell, and he did a good job. He managed the game. He didn't try to force things. He took what was given to him. And uh, like I said, he spread the ball around, and then he did some nice things with his feet. He got a couple first downs, kept some drives live for us to, uh, you know we scrambled and had the opportunity to run a little bit so one thing he's going to have to learn and I talked to him he uh, took two hits on uh, one of the drives and he's going to have to learn to slide or maybe step out of bounds from time to time because you know it's a long season and those type of things but he did a good job he made a guy miss an open field and gained a first down for us to keep one of our scoring drives alive and like I said we're real pleased with how quickly he was able to pick up the system and um, you know we only had him in preseason he was there in the summer but they were doing you know player run seven on seven and thing and and things and then Jack and Kadir and all the other quarterbacks and the upperclassmen did a great great job there in the summer uh, in July helping him learn the offense and uh, you know then when he came in he was able to grasp it pretty quickly and do a good job and obviously had a pretty good first game for us and you have a new offensive coordinator who's going to join us a little bit later Chris Bowden but let's talk about always the best thing for a quarterback is a good running game we're going to have Justin Covington join us a little bit later but talk about the job that him and Jalen Jackson did in the backfield for yeah him. they did a great job we had great balance those guys both have experience from last year kind of with three-headed monster with Forbes and then Justin and um, Jalen, and they did a great job for us. And Justin had his career best at the game, so I was happy to see him get out of the box real well. And Jalen goes in there and, you know, similar styles in some capacities but different in others. You know, uh, Cove will try to make guys miss an open field where I think Jalen is soon to just run guys over. But um, they both did really well, and we had a real good balance attack with the pass and the run. And whenever you can do that, you know, that's going to help. And you do. You have some experience at receiver with – uh, Chenga Hodge and Javon Jones coming back. Got a nice chance to see Des Boykin a little bit as well out there. Talk about your wideouts. Yeah, there's quite a few of them, to be honest with you. We have good depth, and, you know, uh, we've had depth – in that position the last couple of years with a lot of those names that you just mentioned, but that seemed to be one of the positions previously that we've, uh, you know, got hit with some injury and so on. So those guys did a great job in preseason and, you know, you can't really focus on any one of them. They all can bring different things to the table. Some of them are, you know, have good size. Some of them have the good speed. We got behind the defenders at Colgate a couple of times. We did hit the one big touchdown to Shanga for a touchdown and really just missed on a couple others. So real pleased with the uh, whole group of wideouts, to be honest with you. They're all pretty good blockers and you know we're going to improve in that area as well and um, they all run good routes and like I said uh, we did a good job spreading the wealth and you talk about you know you ran the ball for 230 yards two, excuse me 239 yards in the game so you had to be pleased with your guys up front as well as some returning guys and then you stick a freshman right tackle in there and he seemed to hold his own pretty well yeah nick did okay nick's a red shirt freshman so um he's been with us but he also did a prep year so he's a little more mature than you know your normal uh young guy that's coming right out of high school is starting as you said his first college start so he did a good job and then the other guys have all played unfortunately through the uh last couple seasons we've had a couple injuries in the o-line position and you know that allowed kofi appear to get some quality time and as you mentioned gratton dumas they're both returning starters and colin gamroth played a lot for us last year who's now the starting center and he's done a phenomenal job so we should have some pretty good continuity there again if we can just keep them healthy and keep 
keep them playing together, all five. And, uh, you know, they did a good job in the spring trying to get that continuity and those type of things. So, and they've all played. You know, we seem young in some aspects. When you look at returning starters, we don't have a lot of returning starters, but we have a lot of guys with game experience. You know, Cove and Jalen aren't listed as returning starters because Forbes was there, but they played a lot of football yeah. for us. Same thing with Kofi and some of the linemen. They played a lot of football for us because, you know, Hitner list missed four games last year, so Kofi got the opportunity to play all those games and so on. And they're juniors and seniors in the classroom, so they've been in the program. We're not playing a ton of true freshmen. As a matter of fact, I don't know if we're playing that many at all. I don't think this might be the first year we don't have a true freshman starter. You know, last year Benford started as a true starter at the corner position. The year before that, Amos was a true freshman starter. So we do have some freshmen in some special teams roles and some backup roles. But right now we have some of the older guys playing maybe for the first time as a starter, but they have played before in previous years, so they do have some experience under their belt. And, Coach, you mentioned a couple guys in your defense. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll talk about your defensive performance against Colgate. We're live from the Vill- from the inn at Villanova University, located at 601 County Line Road in Radnor. Tonight's show is being presented by Miller Lite, the original light beer brewed for more taste and only 96 calories. Miller Lite, hold true. Back with more of Talking Villanova Football after this on 610 ESPN. <laughs> got it going it was uh zero zero at the end of the first quarter and colgate was actually in the, in the middle of a pretty good drive and they had a completed pass and uh, malik fisher did a great job getting out of his rush lane and chasing the guy down the field and punched the ball out from behind and that's when Jaqu- jaquan Amos got his fumble recovery and we scored off of that drive and then their very next possession um forrest ryan rushed their quarterback so we kind of threw a ball that he probably wasn't ready to deliver and threw it behind his receiver and Jaquan made a nice play on that ball and returned it for a touchdown so it went from 0-0 to 14 nothing pretty quickly and uh, that kind of got it rolling a little bit and then we put up two more scores before the half so it was 27 nothing at halftime so the defense did a great job with those two turnovers back to back possessions for Colgate and that kind of got the ball rolling in our favor big time and we talk about this pretty much every game you try to make teams one dimensional you're able to hold them to 70, 7 yards 
of rushing offense. He did a really good job of shutting down the quarterback, who was a pretty uh, above average runner. So defensively, kind of shut them down, tried to make them one dimensional. Yeah, I think we got them out of their uh, game plan a little bit because he is a good runner. Bredeman's been there a long time. He's the Patriot League preseason offensive player of the year. And I think last year in the um, 12 games they had, I think he threw six or seven touchdown passes. So they're more of a rushing attack team, zone read team, and Brenneman does a good job running the football. But we were able to, you know, not shut their running game down, but slow it down big time. And then they started throwing. I don't think they want to throw 30, 40 times a game, which is what they ended up doing against us. And, you know, we put good pressure on them. I think we sacked them five times and had them uh, throw quite a few balls out of bounds because he had to get rid of it. So we did a good job. Like I said, we we're really pleased with um, the way our guys came out and played physical. We played pretty fast and played physical, and uh, I think we got them out of their uh, game plan a little bit. And you mentioned before break, you know, Amos and Benford, probably two of your – most whole pro, high profile guys in the, in the back end and you know, it looked like you guys were sending some guys here and there making some you know pressure on the quarterback trusting your cornerbacks to, hey you guys are going to get these guys one on one we're going to send some people it looks like everyone held up well and you were able to get some pressure yeah we were able to uh, you know play them a little bit more man to man than maybe we do traditionally and we uh, did pressure them a little more than maybe we have done a little more man blitz versus zone blitz but you know our, our line did a good job like I said getting pressure on the quarterback and when we sent the linebackers they were finding the lanes and finding the seams to get back there as well we we hit him a few times even though we got the ball off we he knew we were there you know and uh, I think that made him a little uncomfortable you know not being able to just sit in the pocket until they're ball downfield so the coverage behind it obviously when you have the rush and he's hurried that's going to help your coverage and we were able to do that that day. I always want to ask college football coaches, it's, it's one of the few sports where you don't get a scrimmage or an exhibition game. You know, baseball has 30, you know, spring training games. The NFL plays four preseason games. You brought in two new coordinators this year, so you guys are kind of new on both sides of the ball. Obviously, you're the head coach and you understand the game plan going in, but just talk about what it's like preparing for a first game when, um, like I said, you, you haven't had an opportunity. You guys have scrimmaged during practice, but to get that first live game experience. Yeah, it's a lot different, and you don't know what to expect, especially when you're playing a team like Colgate, someone we haven't played in a long time. You know, you haven't faced them. You don't really know their personnel. You don't really know. You're going off of what you're watching a year ago and so on. And like I've said before, each year, no matter how many returning starters you have back or how many you lose, it's always going to be a different year, different chemistry, different vibe with your team. You know, they have some starters coming back and some really good players, but they lost some guys too. And same with us. So, you know, you go into that game and you always – Get, you're worried about no matter how hard you practice and how fast you practice, it's nothing like game speed. So I think our guys, like I said, adjusted well. The thing I was really excited about is we didn't make a lot of mental mistakes. You know, you're watching some of the other opening week games this past weekend, and, uh, you know, teams are jumping off sides or having delayed games or having false starts on offense and, you know, substitution yeah, errors. You have to burn night. a timeout yep. because you are you don't have enough guys on the field. And we didn't have a lot of that. So that was really a good thing. You know, we did have some penalties. Uh, but they were post-snap penalties, you know, a hold here and a block in the back there. So we got to clean that up because that can cost you down the road in a close game. But they were physical. They weren't mental errors. It seemed like we had pretty good focus and we were pretty game ready from a mental capacity. And, uh, you know, you'd rather have the aggressive things than the, the other things. So it was a pretty clean game from our team's perspective, and that was pretty uh, pretty good to see in the opener. One more question about leading into a season. You, you mentioned in one of your interviews I heard you say, you talked about, you know, very few teams – come off a win at the end of the season unless you win the you know, national championship North Dakota State you win your last game but a lot of teams don't get that opportunity to play you guys had the opportunity to beat Delaware in your last game and kind of build off of that and talk about that maybe the momentum it's hard to keep obviously from November all the way to August but talk about what that meant to your club and, and how you kind of use that throughout the offseason yeah our guys went into the offseason um, you know in a good way they, they knew what some of the problems were we had minus you know the injury injury is the big thing and, and you're not going to be able to control that you know but Let's control the things we can control. And our guys did a great job, you know, coming together on and off the field and did a great job pushing each other in the weight room and those type of things and, you know, really monitored themselves over the summer. And you know, like I said, the, the young guys helped the older guys learn some of the things that we were trying to do from spring ball carrying into the summer workouts. So, um, you know, just a pretty good vibe with this team from a togetherness and the chemistry and all the stuff you try to build in the off season, you never know how it's going to materialize or when it's going to materialize, but it seems like it's going in a pretty good direction right now, so we're excited about that. All right, Coach, we're going to bring Justin Covington up after this break, so we'll take a quick break here. We are live from the Inn at Villanova University, located at 601 County Line Road in Radnor. Tonight's show is presented by Miller Lite, the original light beer brewed for more taste and only 96 calories. Miller Lite, hold true. 
Back with more of Talking Villanova Football after this on 610 ESPN. Talking Villanova football with head coach Mark Ferrante. We're at the Inn at Villanova, located at 601 County Line Road in Radnor. And, Coach, we got uh, one of your tri-captains up here to join us, Justin Covington from the Bronx, New York. I love it. Uh, elected team captain by his teammates as only a junior, so we'll talk a little bit about that. But, obviously, Justin had a career rushing game against Colgate, 19 carries for 134 yards, and he's been a member of the all CA, all academic, excuse me, all academic. I tell you, you tell I wasn't one. All academic team in 2017 and 18. And also, I got to talk a little because I married one. I have a nursing major. Right. That's, it's quite an interesting major for him, combining that with football. So, coach, right. take it over with Justin. Yeah, Justin did a great job. Had his career best day, and um, also doing a great job, as you mentioned, elected captain by his peers. And we changed it up this year. We chose captains during preseason. A lot of times, we do it in the spring. But we carried it over through the summer workouts, and then uh, the freshman class was then involved with the selection of captains as well. And, you know, they have an opportunity to have a voice in the selections. And Justin did a great job uh, during the whole summer. We were working, like I said earlier, working with the young guys and so on. So um, how did it feel to have that day you had there, 19 carries, 134 yards, and 37 yards got called back. So you would have been into <laughs> the, you know, 170 range had that one call, not got called back. But – how would you feel about the game, the opening day? I mean, it was good. It was definitely good, obviously, to get the win with the team and, you know, put a display on all the hard work we've put in, you know, from winter and, and summer. And, you know, obviously, I was just trying to do my part, my 111th, and it was just great to see, you know, all come together in all phases of the game, you know, to run the pass and special teams. And I'm glad, you know, we got the win for our first game, and it was great. And people ask me all the time, right, how's this team, how's it, all this, that, and the other thing, and you're captain now. You were elected captain. You spent a lot more time with them in the off season than we do as coaches or what we're allowed to do. So um, how, what do you feel about this team? How do you feel the vibe of the team is going right now? You know, I think it's great. You know, definitely it's a little different from the last, you know, two years. And I think, you know, we've taken great strides, you know, trying to hold each other accountable and making sure we're doing things the right way. And I think from top to bottom, from, you know, coach to player and coach to coach, we're trying to take, you know, all the right steps to make sure that we're doing everything we can to be where we want to be. Because, you know, the last couple of seasons, we obviously didn't finish where we wanted to. And I think we all want to try to do our best, 
you know, to make sure that that doesn't happen again. And I think in part, you know, the team has done a great job of, you know, holding each other accountable, you know, coming together. So this way when we go out on the field, you know, we can just play ball and not have to worry about any of the other stuff that can, you know, offset, you know, winning and losing. And Steve mentioned your major. So why don't you explain to everybody, because uh, nursing major, number one, probably not a common major for the sport of football. Um, and I know that your activities throughout the course of a day are a lot different than someone who's maybe just taken the regular four or five, 15 credit hours, 12 or 15 credit hours. So why don't you share with everybody, what does the week look like for you academically as well as the practice? Uh, it's, I mean, it's, it's pretty time cut out for me, you know. So today, you know, my Tuesday, wake up at 6 a.m., breakfast at 6.30, meeting 6.45 to 8.15, then we have practice. And then today I have a 10 o'clock class, so I leave early with a couple of my other teammates that have class, 10 to 11.50. I get a break, then I have class from 1 to 2.15, and then 2.30 to 5.15, and then training table right after that. So, you know, the day is pretty cut back, and then Monday and Wednesday I'm in the hospital doing my clinical rotation 2 to 8, and then Thursday I have class again, and Friday I'm off from class. So, you know, a big part of, you know, being a nursing major, just managing my time and, you know, trying to find the time to study because obviously playing football, I don't really study on Saturdays because that's game day and Sunday we're kind of off meetings and running over film. So just making sure that I'm using the time that I can to study and, you know, get my work done so I'm able to go out there and play on Saturday. And where do you go for your clinicals? You said 2 p.m. to 8 p.m. Yeah, twice this, a week. This this first half before for break, I'm in a psych rotation, so I'm going to Abington Memorial, and then in after fall break, I'm at obstetrics with, you know, babies and mothers. So that would be <laughs> in Pennsylvania Hospital, so that should okay. be interesting. Yeah, that's a little bit of a commute. And what did you do in the spring? Didn't you have morning clinicals in the spring? spring? That was med surge. That I was I was in the HUP, so Hospital University of Pennsylvania. I would do that on Mondays and Wednesdays. I think it was seven to one. Okay, so you go just about everywhere. Yeah. I got one personal form for Justin. I was at the game. I got a chance to meet your mom and dad up at Colgate. There was a ball thrown down the sidelines that kind of went through your hands that I think your mom and dad thought you should catch. I don't think you need to coach him, Coach, because his mom and dad were on him. Yeah, I, I, I saw them after the game as well, and the first thing they said to me, it wasn't about his 19 carries or his 134 yards or nothing. It was about the drop pass that he had down the sidelines. So, yeah, they were probably more critical on you than even our coaches are at times. So that's a good thing. Yeah, but just talk about what your family means to you. Obviously, uh, I mean, they're, they're traveling up from the Bronx up to Hamilton, and I could just see the love and support they're giving you in the good. And obviously, when, when you had those great runs, they're cheering for you, but they, they want the best for you. They're, I, was, I seem to be a little demanding in, what you make, in terms of your choices in life, and obviously you made a lot of good ones. But talk about your family a little bit. Um, you know, my mom is definitely my backbone, and she's kind of put me in the position to, to be where I am. A lot of people, you know, have kind of done what they have, including my dad. You know, it honestly takes a village, you know, to – be able to do what I'm able to do and even he being here at Villanova with the coaching staff and the teammates and you know family is a big thing for me because I'm not doing it you know just for me but for the people back at home and the, the other kids that are in the Bronx you know looking up to somebody to say hey I can do that so you know I'm always just trying to make sure I'm doing the right things and you know trying to represent my name well on the back of my jersey and the name on the front, you know, to represent the school well and just do what I can and be the best I can be. Coach, he's obviously made some good choices. His teammates are recognizing that as he's been recognized as a captain. Talk a little bit about Justin's recruiting process. Um, I don't know a lot about New York City football. I know we've had some kids come out of the city. Right. Uh, talk a little bit about that process. Well, Coach Trishiani was the area recruiter at the time, and now he's obviously down at Elon as the head coach. And uh, so Coach Trish um, was the one that first – you know, introduced Justin to us. And then I went up and did a home visit with Justin and his mom at one point uh, up to their home up in the Bronx. And since then they've moved. I don't know, Justin <laughs> didn't share that with everyone. He's actually, mom actually has a further commute now, I believe. It's longer from Middletown, right? Yeah, Middletown. They're in upstate New yep, York. Yep. You know, Middletown, New York is where mom moved to. So she has a little more commute to her work and obviously coming down to the games. But you could just tell that he and his mom had a special relationship when you're in the home. And, you know, we spent a, about an hour, maybe a little longer, when Tony and I both went up there to talk with him in the house and all that stuff. And we're just happy he decided to come our way because he's not only, as you see, a quality football player, but he's a quality individual quality person and that's what we try to get here at Villanova guys that are serious about their academics and he obviously is doing the nursing major because that's very demanding and then you know someone who wants to also do what we need him to do on the field and Justin's been great and it was reflective of the votes he received by his teammates. 
Well, Justin, we appreciate you coming up and joining us. Best of luck Saturday against Lehigh. We're going to take a quick break. We are live from the inn at Villanova University, located at 601 County Line Road in Radnor. Tonight's show is presented by Miller Lite, the original light beer, brewed for more taste and only 96 calories. Miller Lite, hold true. We'll be back with more talking Villanova football after this on 610 ESPN. Villanova football with head coach Mark Friday. We're coming live from the Inn at Villanova, located at 601 County Line Road in Radnor. And coach, we're joined by your new offensive coordinator. I still refer to him as our quarterback because right, that's right. how old I am. But right. uh, your career passing leader, you could probably use him out there. Dan Smith played pretty well, but we could probably use Chris out there. The new offensive coordinator, Chris Bowden. Welcome back, Chris. Thank you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> yeah, good to have you here, Chris. So, um, the question that everyone's been asking me was, uh, and we can get into Chris's past if you like, as far as you know what he did here as a player. But um, the one thing that people want to know is, after Villanova, right? You were here as a player from '96 to 2000, and then you graduated. What was your career path after that? That's kind of what everyone's been asking me. Has he coached? Where is he coached? You know, I know you. Pl- I'll let you explain that because I know you were in a lot of small towns uh, yeah. in some of your playing career and so on. So I'll let you go from. I guess the spring of 20, oh, 2001, right, to yeah. where we are today. Okay. Uh, it's a long story, so I don't yeah. think we have enough time for that. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. Um, yeah, basically right after college, I, I, I played in the Arena Football League for the Indiana Firebirds. I got traded halfway through to the New Jersey Gladiators. I went straight when the season was done to Fordham and coached quarterbacks with Dave Clawson for a season. Went back to the Arena Football League, played for like three other teams that season, got, kept getting traded, went back to Fordham, decided, hey, I'm just going to chase the dream. Played for about four years in the Arena Football League. And then uh, started coaching in it, coached for the Nashville Cats, Colorado Crush, the Colorado Crush as the OC. And uh, he, John Elway was the owner and got to work with him, which was pretty cool. Uh, and then uh, I came back to the junior college level and was the offense coordinator at ASA College in New York, helped start that from scratch, eventually took over as a head coach and then became uh, the head coach at ASA College in Miami. Um, and again, along the way, I kind of turned down opportunities. My wife was a teacher, wanted to make sure she got uh, taking, or her career taken care of. And, um, you know, eventually this, uh, this is a great opportunity to come home. And you talked to me before, where were you and Nagy, Matt Nagy? 
together in the Arena League? Uh, I was his offensive coordinator and quarterback coach for the Columbus Destroyers <laughs> the whole offseason, and then right before the season, the Arena League ceased operations. So Matt and I, we played against each other for – I think four years, all four years. He was at Delaware. I was at Villanova. He never won once. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so Matt and I spent the whole offseason. Yeah, right. And then uh, <laughs> Matt and I spent the whole offseason putting the playbook together, and then the arena league took a break. He went to the Eagles. I went to the junior college level. You know, it's kind of basically the same. So uh, it's good. <laughs> but gla- really glad to see the success that he's had. Right. And um, why don't you tell everybody a little bit about your family? You mentioned your wife. Jackie and uh, we know you have two children and they're originally from New Jersey uh, yes my wife my wife is from Bergen County New Jersey uh, she went to Delaware um, obviously no booze okay <laughs> I didn't um, know that in the uh, process that you and I were talking together but yeah. that's okay <laughs> yeah, she's a Delaware grad so um, but yeah we have two children Chase is uh, seven our son and our daughter Michaela is four and they're both uh, Jersey kids born in Jersey and then kind of raised for the last couple of years in Florida. So they're excited to be back home. And Chris, talk a little bit about, uh, you know, an opportunity comes up at Villanova. Talk about how, you know, you and Coach Ferrante get together, decide this is going to be a good fit for both of you guys and, and just your experience since you came back, uh, back here at Villanova. Yeah, it's been great. Coach Ferrante started talking to me uh, around the convention and, uh, you know, I was really excited and uh, hoped it would work out. And, uh, you know, like I said, once he offered me the job, it's been great. Uh, everything's been awesome. I, I love, uh, I love really kind of stepping back from the head coaching role I was in to being an OC because I used to say that every day. I'm like, I would love to sit down, and just break down film and, and game plan, and and now I kind of have the time for all that, and it's it, it's been great. The offensive staff has been great. The kids have been great. The energy of practice has been awesome. So uh, it's just it's been a great transition, and uh, you know, really looking forward to see and where the season goes. You've been gone almost 19 years from when you left. L- lots changed. It had, it had, and it's very nostalgic walking around campus. And I do it. I mean, I'm on a group text, like I was telling Cove earlier, with all the guys I graduated with, with Sean Lyons, Dave Hecker, you know, all the greats. And you know, I send them pictures every day. And then when they come to see me, it's just kind of, it's very nostalgic walking around and and remembering the memories from you know 19 years ago, 20 years ago, whatever. So, but it's they've done an amazing job with it. And you know, uh, the tally center, the tally, you know, our, where our offices are in the locker room and, the, you know, everything, it, it's really going in a great direction. You mean the facilities are a little different than when you played here? <laughs> a little bit, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and all the stuff across the street. It's, it's yeah. The whole campus has changed and transformed, obviously, over the last few years. And, you know, Chris is originally California, San Clemente guy, and Rob Richardson was the center. He was in high school and then obviously center part-time here. So when uh, – how? You guys were how far apart? In we were the- two years apart. So he was my center in high school. As a, he was a sophomore, I was a senior, and then he came here and became. As soon as he got on, he was he was our center from uh, day one. Right, so. right, yeah. He played a lot for us, and they both end up. You know, both of them when they were here as undergrads. You know, I'm going to graduate. Go back to Cali. Go back to Cali. Neither one of them ever left. <laughs> What's funny because all the people in Cali aren't from Cali. You know, we got the people from right. Cali are coming east. Yeah, but yeah. It's, it's interesting. But uh, to Coach Frank, you know, Coach, uh, I don't want to say everyone, but a lot of similar often, a lot of people running the spread now in college football. Talk a little bit about what Co- Coach Bowden showed you that you thought would work here in the CAA. Yeah, well, really pleased with Bo more as a person and, and as a coach and knowing him as a player obviously we knew how smart he was with the concepts of what he was doing as a player and so on and you know followed his career a little bit but not you know watching it all the way and then when we and I Bo and I started talking when Sam and I had a conversation and Sam talked about you know maybe not going on much further and getting out of the coaching profession that's when Bo's the first guy talked thought about and really the only guy I talked to and uh you know we had plenty of conversation on the phone and then as Bo just mentioned you know we got together a couple times down at the convention out in San Antonio this past January and that's kind of where we you know had the interview I guess if you will call it call it that if you want it really wasn't that it was more of a conversation and um, you know I really was hoping it was going to work out I was uh, he seemed very interested when we talked about it initially and I'm just glad it did work out because really he was plan A and there really wasn't a plan B in place uh, until there needed to be and you know it worked out to get Bo back up here so we're excited about that and as you said you know shotgun a lot of colleges are in a shotgun we, we do go under center from time to time I know we practice that in practice and you know those type of things but he's been doing a lot of similar things than what we're doing and you know it's really just the terminology thing that you got to get squared away and during part of the conversation that Bo and I had I asked him just from my own edification can you come in and learn the terminology that we all know so I don't have to relearn things you know and uh 
of course, his answer was, sure, sure, no problem. Well, that lasted about a week of spring ball, and now it's all new terminology. You know, all the guys had to learn it from scratch. Um, I'm still learning it, to be honest with you, and uh, yeah, I'm just happy that he's in place and running, yeah. the, running the offense right now. And, Chris, from, uh, after results of week one, it looks like your guys are pretty bright and can pick it up quick. Uh, I guess describe your philosophy offensively. What you, what, what, like, let's hope Saturday night at 9 o'clock after we play Lehigh, what makes Chris Bowden happy? What does he see on the stat sheet? What does he see out in the field? Uh, a balance for number one. Um, you know, we, we talk about our goals as an offensive unit. I mean, obviously the first goal is to win. You know, we don't care if we win 3 nothing. The winning is is what – what we have to do um we want to have balance offensively you know we will always have balance offensively i think those are the best offenses if, you, if you, you're a one-sided offense you're easy to defend so i think we were very balanced from colgate uh we did a good job uh like coach Fronde alluded to with the penalties they were gr- aggressive penalties which you know those are going to happen and we can live with those we just got to clean them up we didn't have false starts we didn't have late hits uh we didn't you, you know burn timeouts because of delay games you know i thought we were we executed pretty well. I thought the kids were into it. And, you know, what we told the kids is, you know, and I, they are kids because I don't care how old they are. You're still a kid. <laughs> um, you know, it's it, – you know, it's easy to lead when everything's going well. But when we face adversity, you know, where's the leadership going to come from? How are you guys going to react? And I thought, you know, we had a couple, you know, I think we had like three drives stall, and it was all because of penalties. You know, we were moving the ball. The penalties backed us up and put us in bad positions. Other than that, we had one three and out, which is, you know, one too many. But we moved the ball consistently. I think we really wore down Colgate as the game went on. We had their safeties running all over the place with, with our motion we were doing. I thought the O-line was very physical. But uh, it's a long-winded answer to your question. But we want to be balanced. Uh, we want to take what the defense gives us. Uh, and we want to put our ball, put the ball uh, in our playmakers' hands early and often. Well, save a little breath because we're going to hold you for one more segment. We're going to take a quick break now. We're live from the inn at Villanova University, located at 601 County Line Road in Rander. Tonight's show is presented by Miller Lite, the original light beer brewed for more taste in only 96 hours. Miller Lite, hold true. Back with more talk in Villanova football after this on 610 ESPN. to talk in Villanova football head coach Mark Ferrante. We're coming live from the inn at Villanova University located at 601 County Line Road in Radnor. And Chris, one qu- we're joined by offensive coordinator Chris Bowden. Chris, one question I have. Dan Smith comes in in the summer to, to get ready for your program. 
Does your junior college background help? Like, junior college, you only have a kid for two years. Mm-hmm. So did that help you trying to get a kid who's just getting into the program up to speed a little quicker? Yeah, I think with what we did the ter- with terminology, I think it made it easier for younger players to step in and play, or new players, um, just kind of formationally and how we kind of call things. But, again, it, it, it in, in reality, it is exactly the same thing. Um, you know, it really is. So, But it's just – it was – from all my experience of dealing with one-year players and two-year players, it was how do we get these kids to play, get them on the field, get them uh, recruited, and have them play with confidence quickly. So, And it really starts from that of learning the offense and, and trying to keep it simple for them while still doing a lot of things. And the multiplicity really in our offense right now is coming from our formations and motions. We're running a lot of similar things, but just – different looks and different ways to run it and how we're getting the ball to our different people so it's been good it's been uh it's been good and our guys seem to pick it up pretty quickly so it's uh it it's words right it's words it's memorization some people have a number system some people have words some people when you go tempo it's a one word that means everything and so it's just memorization from the players and our guys seem to really pick that up and i think the fact that chris came in and did change some of the terminology because we still have some of the carryover calls as well protections and some of our things like that um that may have allowed dan to be at the same starting point with kadir and jack and the guys who had been in our program you know knowing the old terminology they're all kind of learning at the same time and like i said those guys did a great job helping each other it was really good to see them coming in all collectively over the summer in july watching film you know jack and jj scarpella and all those guys were taking dan and you know some of the other guys and bring them in and really helping them learn what we we're doing and watching film together and they went out there and organized the seven on sevens and that type of stuff uh you know from players perspective and i think that really helped all those guys come out there and you know be further along for when we got into preseason and chris from someone who's been watching villanova football for a long time it it looked like to me and i'm a novice trust me that you took some more deep shots than maybe we've seen in the past is that something you saw from colgate or is that something that you just kind of have in your philosophy if hey we're gonna we're gonna take we're gonna take some chances downfield yeah i I think i take that from dave clausen is that when he came in, uh, when he re- he brought me in, recruited me, you know, and Coach Telly signed me and, and brought me in and everything like that. But his whole thing offensively was when they give us cover zero, we're not going to throw slants. We're not going to throw check downs. We're not going to throw screens. We're going to max protect, and we're going to launch it deep, and we're going to score. And, you know, I know that's – you know, we did that. Uh, against Colgate because they gave us those opportunities. You know, you still, from the passing game, you still have to take what the defense gives you. But like I said, if they're going to give us deep shots, um, then we're going to take them. If they're going to give us the check downs, we're going to take them. But we're not going to be scared to throw the ball down the field. I think with what our defense does and kind of going against them in the spring and camp, they gave us a whole lot of looks where that's kind of what we had to do. And I think we really started to develop chemistry of throwing the deep ball. And that's something that it's good. It's something where that's on film of, of seeing – you know, six, seven deep shots, whatever we took, um, you know, to back teams off. And we really backed Colgate off, too. They were, you know, it's third and three. They're in cover three, dropping the guys way off, which isn't, you know, something you'd expect. Yeah. And, Coach, you talk about explosive plays. You know, right. but you don't give them up defensively and obviously try to get some on offense. So, something you are obviously like to see out of your offense. Yeah, and it definitely helped the run game because, you know, if you watch that game again and you see their safeties pretty close to the box and coming downhill quickly uh, in some of our early runs in the early part of the game, and then we took some of those deep shots and hit the one in Shanga that you just heard coming out of the break and so on. Uh, we had a couple other near misses. I mean, it was maybe one or two steps away or you know maybe just a little higher arc on that ball we had probably had another one of Javon Jones and you know Cuff down the sideline that we talked about would have been a big play and so on and that really loosened up which has now opened up the run game you'll have less numbers in the box less less aggressive safeties you know they got to worry about the coverage and as Bo mentioned earlier we had their safeties going back and forth because we did put a lot of motion in it and and things of that nature so we're tiring those guys out with the deep shots with the motions and now they're not as aggressive coming downhill defending the run so now you know you got to worry about the first two levels instead of worrying about that third level defender playing the run as well chris this this might be an obscure question but uh, talk a little bit about you mentioned how you played in the arena league you coached in the arena league playing on that short tight field what does that do for your philosophy, your mentality in terms of when you get back out on the, the wider field? Now, we're not in Canada, but you know what I mean? You're out there. You're used to playing in that short box, and now you're playing in that wide field. Yeah. The the first game I coached back at ASA College at coming from the Arena Football League, it was the easiest thing ever. And that was <laughs> – and it was something Kurt Warner also said is that when he went from the indoor game to the outdoor game, he's like, this is easy now because everything happens so fast. 
where you can't lead a receiver out of bounds. Uh, the play calling, being on ESPN, being nationally televised, and them telling you, hey, you have a three-hour block. We're going to take our commercial breaks. And they tell the officials, hey, before the play's over, start the play clock. And having to call play so fast and get it in and out. And uh, for me, it's almost it, it really slows it down, as crazy as it sounds. And I know I felt during Colgate especially, like I had so much time to call plays. And we're, we're you know, dumbing the cadence and, and trying to get second looks at the defense. I'm looking at the play clock. There's still 25 seconds left. And I'm <laughs> like, this is, you know, I'm trying to milk the clock as well. And I'm like, we got to go. But um, it was – I thought the coaching in the Arena League was extremely well. I know, like, Jay Gruden was in it, obviously, Nagy. There's a lot of guys in that league that, that made the jump kind of back to the NFL or college. And it's it was such a technique league where you had to really teach receivers how to run routes and sell things the wrong way. And then quarterbacks had to be so fast with their feet and be ready to throw. But um, it, it's, it's definitely uh, – it's great, and I, like I said, I know Kurt Warner talked about that. It was when it went from the indoor game to the outdoor game. He's like, this is easy because he's got all this room to work with. But uh, from the coaching standpoint, uh, like I said, it's uh, it, it was a great experience. So, And I was concerned about that. You know, again, going into the first game, you know, you don't have a play clock in practice. You know, even when we go down and do our scrimmage at Ocean City and those types of yeah. things, we don't have the – we have referees at some of our scrimmages in preseason, but we don't have the play clock, so they're not throwing delayed games. And, you know, that was a concern of mine going in because I felt that times in practice we were kind of going slow you know and, and Chris and I had talked about that in the game I wasn't concerned about the play clock at all I'm, I'm watching us snap the ball off and as he said there's 20 seconds 15 seconds still left on the clock and you know you see that in other games where you have to burn and waste a timeout yeah. because you know it's the co uh, clock's kick ticking down you know they're at two and one and all that stuff so I was pretty excited about how we again executed the fundamentals of the offense defense and special teams who didn't have a lot of blunders no turnovers you know we got two in our favor so it was a, a clean game that I was excited about and you know it's Chris's uh, ability to call the plays and snap it off with plenty of time on the yeah, clock. Yeah, and I even good. noticed, you know, when we had the big lead late in the game, you're up 34-14, we get the ball back, and it's like, you guys are ready at 22. I'm like, I hope we run some clock. And he ran it down inside of five because you, you, you're running the ball kind of, you want to keep it away from Colgate. So you, you were you were ready with 22, 23 in the clock, but you guys took those dummy looks, as you mentioned, and ran it down under 10 and five, and we were able to kind of run that game out. Yeah, no, they did a good job. Man, Like I said, Danny did a good job managing the game. He he took the shots when they were there to take, and he wasn't forcing the ball and pulled it down a couple times and those type of things. So all in all, it was a, a good opener, and now, you know, we got to get ready for the next one, and it seems like uh, we're almost into another opening game mode because it's been so long yeah. since we played. Well, Chris, thanks for joining us here. Welcome back, and uh, best of luck this Saturday against Lehigh. We're going to take a quick break. We're live from the inn at Villanova University, located at 601 County Line Road in Radnor. Tonight's show is presented by Miller Lite, the original light beer, brewed for more taste and only 96 hours. Miller Lite, hold true. We'll be back with more Talking Villanova Football after this on 610 ESPN.
back to Talking Villanova Football Head Coach Mark Ferrante. We're coming live from the Inn at Villanova University, located at 601 County Line Road in Radnor. And, Coach, like you said, it sounds like you've been off for a while, but the uh, Lehigh Mountain Hawks come in. They come off a, a tough defeat, to say the least. Obviously, a last-second field goal goes wide, and they fall to St. Francis 14-13. I guess – you have a bye so early in the year. It's like it's almost like you haven't played yet or you played like years ago. Right. So talk a little bit about how you got your team ready and, and what you're preparing for for Saturday. Right. It does seem like a while ago. And um, it was different to play that week zero game. You know, there's only four games that day, two FCS, two FBS. And we were the first kickoff in this 150th uh, year anniversary of college football. So that was pretty cool um, to be the noon kickoff of the opening weekend. And – the thing that I like about this buy is this is the first time because we opened up so early that summer school and preseason practice overlapped. So normally when our guys come in, our whole team's here roughly for the month of July, second session summer school. And then they get almost a full week in between before we start practice. This year it overlapped by four days. So they had class on Friday. We had practice that Friday. We practiced Saturday and Sunday. They had finals on Monday, and then we went into preseason. So they didn't, they didn't get that break. So to be honest with you, I liked last week's bye because it gave them an opportunity to get a little bit of a break with Labor Day weekend. And um, we treated the bye like we treat our later in the year buys as far as practice time and those type of things. So basically what we did is we played Colgate. We brought them in on Sunday like we always do because, you know, you want to get the game out of their system physically. You put them in the weight room. They're in a the training room. They do those types of things. They get their treatment. And then we clean up the film and make the corrections and get that game behind us. Monday they were off, which is our – day off normally throughout the whole year so we got back on our regular schedule and it happened to be the first day of the semester classes so it was good to have a break from football while they're getting themselves squared away academically we practiced tuesday wednesday and thursday now those practices were abbreviated we didn't go the full practice of what we normally do in a regular uh, game week mode and we gave them off friday and saturday so a lot of guys were able to get away from home, get away from campus, go home, see their families, and so on, which they didn't have the opportunity. They were here sure. without a break since June 26th. And some were here since you know, you know, and May some 26th. And some were here yeah. since May 20, whatever first session started. So it was a good break for them, to be honest with you. And then, uh, you know, we got a couple extra opportunities to, you know, work our prep for Lehigh, our next opponent. And then this past Sunday, it was more of a Tuesday mindset. It was more of a game week practice as opposed to a Sunday following a game and so on. So we feel we're in good position now. We came out of the game pretty good physically as far as, you know, injuries and so on. So we're hoping we'll have everybody there for this Saturday versus Lehigh. Um, but, again, it's like I said, it, it is our home opener. It's a 6 p.m. game, so we're all excited about that playing at home. But it almost feels like a, a second opening yeah. opening game of the season. It's just some statistics. You know, Tom Gilmore comes over from Holy Cross down to Lehigh. Looks like defensively did a good job against the run against St. Francis, held only 68 yards. And you and Chris both talked about being balanced. You obviously want to still be able to run the football. That seems to be their strength defensively stopping the run. Yeah, they'll load the box just like a lot of teams do these days. They, they run a lot of movement up front, a lot of slants, a lot of angles, a lot of twists. So when you're a zone team and you have the guys on the other side of the line moving and, you know, not playing the gap they're aligned in, that's always a challenge. And they'll bring some, you know, pressures with the linebackers and run a lot of zone blitzing. And again, they'll cross their linebackers and those type of things. So you got to just play disciplined football to be able to do that. And they'll have their safeties coming downhill and be pretty aggressive. You know, uh, McCluskey's a guy that seems like he's been there forever. I believe he's a fifth year guy for them and he's been playing a lot of football. And, uh, you know, he'll get involved in the run game as well and you know they'll play some zero as well with their corners I think they like their corners as much as we like our okay. corners so they'll put some pressure on their corners to cover the wide outs and be able to add people to the box to stop the run game which they did a pretty good job of last week that was a really weird game when you watch it on you know the coaches copy I didn't see the TV copy that they had um but, you know, as far as uh, what we see on film and the one thing that it did is it allowed us to, you know, because last Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday, they have a new coordinator on off on, excuse me, defense. So you're wondering if what you're doing in those extra practices is what you're going to see and seeing them play against St. Francis this past weekend kind of was able to, uh, you know, solidify in our mind that we are, I think, going in the right direction as far as our plan of attack and so on. So 
we'll see how that goes. But they'll come in hungry. I know Tom's a great coach. We faced him before when he was at Holy Cross in one of our playoff years a while back, and they're always physical. Uh, they'll be well coached. They'll be disciplined, and uh, they'll be hungry because they really, in their mind, I'm sure they think one slipped through their fingers because yeah. they had a 13-0 lead at halftime. And then um, St. Francis didn't take the lead till a minute 17 left in the game. And even with that, Lehigh had a chance to win the game. They came down within field goal range, made the field goal, but the St. Francis coach called timeout just before the snap. So yeah. he called it late enough where the kick field goal went. team executed the fundamentals of the kick and made it. And then uh, the referees honored the timeout. So Lehigh had to line up and try it again, and it went just wide right. So really, they probably think they uh, – you know, should have won that game as opposed to coming in here 0-1-1. They feel they should be 1-0. and All right, Coach, before we go to a quick break, I did want to mention, I'd be remiss if I didn't, Jaquan Amos, National FCS Defensive Player of the Week. So a great honor for him. You mentioned our corner, so a great honor for him. He's been a star, you know, quality player for you for three years now. Yeah, it's good, and I said that to the team this morning because that just came out yesterday because, again, our game was so long ago, but they put Week 0 and Week 1 together, and for him to get our CAA Player of the Week defensively and then to get the National Player – was real impressive for him but as he says and as we say you know any recognition for any individual our, is our team is uh, recognition for the whole program so we're excited about that all right coach we're gonna take one last break but i want to thank you and wish you the best of luck on saturday six o'clock villanova stadium the wildcats and the mountain hawks right here on the main line so we'll, we'll take one last quick break we're live from the, the inn at villanova university located at 601 county line road in radners tonight show is presented by miller light the original light beer brewed for more taste and only 96 calories miller light Hold true. Back with one last quick segment of Talking Villanova Football after this on 610 ESPN. show is presented by Miller Lite, the original light beer brewed for more taste and only 96 calories. Miller Lite, hold true. Thanks to our hosts here at the Inn at Villanova University, Joe Gaines and Ryan Lennox. Tune in to 610 ESPN when Villanova takes on Lehigh this Saturday, September 7th. Game time is 6 o'clock. Our pregame is at 545. Our next talk in Villanova football show will be next Tuesday, September 10th, right here at the end at 7 p.m. For Coach Mark Ferrante, this is Steve Pannone. Thanks for listening to 610 ESPN. You've been listening to Talking Villanova Football.